Okay, let's do this problem right here now. A construction team is excavating the foundation for an office building. They use a backhoe to dig a hole 30 meters wide, 25 meters long, and 8 meters deep. The soil and sand they dig out is piled on the side of the construction site. The soil and sand is in a rough form of a cone with a diameter of 26 meters at the base. What is the approximate height in meters of the pile of soil, pile of soil and sand? Use 3.14 for pi and round your answer to two decimal places. This is an intense one. I, there's just no two ways around it. But I just want you to start off with one observation here. That the cone-shaped pile that is, that is created has the same volume as the hole it came from. Right? We made a cone, we piled up some, some dirt, made a cone, but it came, out of, um, it came out of a hole that was rectangular shaped. Okay, so if I know the volume of the rectangular solid that the soil and sand came from, I know the volume of the cone. So let's use that fact right there to help us out here. Again, the cone-shaped pile that is created has the same volume as the hole it came from. It's good to know. Okay, now what do we know about the hole it came from? The hole is a rectangular shaped thing, right? It has a width of 30, a length of 25, and a height of 8. Okay, so since the rectangular is solid, we would do length times width times height. 30 by 25 by 8 in this case. So we have 6,000 cubic feet uh, of, of volume for, the, for both the hole and for the cone. We know the cone has a volume of 6,000 cubic feet. All right, now we're talking about cones. Let's look at your FCAT reference sheet. Right? That's your best friend right there. Up here is what we're talking about. We're, well, here's the rectangular salad part of it. Yes, we're dealing with that. Length times width times height. We're also dealing with the cones, the right circular cone. That's so it's one-third pi times r squared times height. Those are the two different shapes we're dealing with in this problem, and this the FCAT reference sheet helps us out. All right, so back to our problem here, right? We know that the cone, the cone has, the same, has 6,000 cubic feet of volume. It's the, same, it's the same volume as the hole that it came from, the rectangular shaped hole that it came from. So let's start calculating here. Okay, we know the hole has a volume of 6,000 cubic meters, um, and the cubic, that means that the cone is also made up of 6,000 cubic meters. I think I said cubic feet earlier. I was wrong. Cubic meters, my bad. All right, let's start calculating here now. So we know we're dealing with the right circular cone. Now we want to know the height. We're asked the height now. We know everything else. We know what pi is. We know what the radius is. We just got to solve for height. We also know what the volume is. Right there, it says we also know what the volume is. So let's go ahead and solve here. 6,000 cubic meters is one-third times pi. Here's it up here. One-third times pi times the radius squared times the height. That's how we find the volume of cone. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in what we know here. Okay, so 6,000, that's the volume. One-third times pi is 3.14 times the radius is 13. 13 squared in this case. We're going to square 13. How do I know the radius is 13? It says up here the diameter is 26. It says here the diameter is 26. The radius is half the diameter. Okay, so we'll go half of that, which is 13. Okay, so now, now I've got everything I need to start solving for height. Let's, let's plug in what we know here. Okay, so as a, as a formula, it looks like this. 6,000, that's the volume, equals one-third times pi times the radius squared times height. Those are all the numbers we know. All right, let's get in and start calculating here. Let's take, out, let's take care of the exponents first. It's like good order of operations. Okay. So then, there it goes. If I square 13, I get 169. Now I can just multiply all this together here. I'm going to do one third times 3.14 times 169. Let's just go ahead and just multiply this stuff together here. 3.14 times 169 gives me 530.66. And then I've got to take a third of that, so that means divide by 3. Okay, so if I take a third of this number right here, I'm going to divide by 3. And there it is. Okay, so I've got 6,000 equals... 176.886666, it kind of goes on forever, but I just went ahead and rounded it off there uh, to the significant numbers here. So down there, that, there's, that's what we found, that's our, our almost, we're almost got the final answer now. We've got 6,000 equals 176.8867 times height. What are we trying to find? The problem says go back and find height. Okay, so that's how we set it up. Now I get, all you got to do, the last step is to solve for H. This is a one-step algebra problem. Right, if 6,000 equals 176.8867 times H, then you need to divide the 6,000 by 176.8867, and I'll give you your H. Okay, when you find that, you've got your answer. Good luck.